everybody, it's November 1st and I'm back on the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and uh, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Fortran. Uh, a couple of questions were asked uh, by uh, viewers uh, on my, uh, in my uh, uh, videos from yesterday regarding the C compilers that we have in TK4. And today we're going to be looking at Fortran um, and see the various options we have uh, with TK4 update 8. Um, and I don't think that for the time being the situation of Fortran compilers is going to change uh, with future updates of uh, TK4. I know that specifically um, in the update 9 of TK4 there's not going to be any changes regarding Fortran. So um, we actually have uh, in TK4 at least three Fortran compilers um, and if we use the mostly uh, compiler pack we may even have a fourth option uh, I'll get into that towards the end of the video but let's start with the ones that we have installed in TK4 um, this is uh, update 8 as you can see here um, update 8 so um, the best way to see what compilers we have is to go to sys2.jcl lib or some people call it sys2.jcl-lib, I call it lib, um, and you'll see that Jürgen, um, the maintainer of TK4, has um, produced three different versions of the same prime number generator for, the, for three different compilers. And we're going to be doing also some benchmarking here. So there is the G compiler, um, uh, th it's this one and uh, we're going to be uh, looking here at, uh, at at something that generates 90 how much is it here three nine million uh, prime numbers up to nine million and then we have uh, the IBM H compiler Fortran Fortran H compiler which has optimization uh, features but they're not turned on here um, and I'll show you how to turn on the optimization because it makes actually quite a difference. Same thing, uh, prime numbers up to 9 million. And then we have the what for uh, uh, compiler um, the, from the Waterloo University, uh, which by many was deemed to be a better compiler. And, um, and we have the same program again written for that. Um, for that uh, compiler. Now, um, let me see here just to make sure that it's the same 9,000 and uh, 9 million. Oh yeah, so we have to probably put in here 9 million. Let's see if that works. So let's start with the what for compiler. Uh, um, let's make the, the obvious changes here. I want this to be in my spool viewer as I usually do, so we already put in W for the Wat uh, Waterloo compiler, put this in message class H, and let's run this just off the bat. Uh, job 61, run the spool viewer, and here it is. So return code zero. Let's see how long it took. Uh, how many steps do we have? Okay, this is all one single step. Um, so it started lapse time uh, a tenth of a second for 9 million. Let's see all the way at the bottom. Yep. Mm. This, yeah. some strange artifacts here and I, I suspect it's because of the yeah it's the width of the output um, but that's not a big issue so let's then go with the H compiler and we'll run it first without optimization and then we'll run it with optimization we'll look at the difference uh, Age, no ops. Okay. 
Um, and then we'll go see how to add optimization to it. Um, compile the DIPM West Fortran H2821.8 compiler. So, uh, by the way, what this refers to 21.8 is that this is an MVT compiler. That's why we have those compilers available because uh, during MVT times, the compilers were not proprietary. Uh, because the US government had funded part of the development effort and so therefore uh, IBM had to release it uh, as public domain not out of infinite uh, goodness but just out of legal requirement um, and uh, so these are very very ancient fortune compilers but they work well so let's run this without optimization uh, we call it herd one h um, because this is the fortune h level compiler okay Let's go here, and here it is. So both steps, uh, compilation and go, no problem. This is the Fortran step, this is the compiler step, and this is the go step. This took a third of a second, so much, much, much faster, about three times faster, 300% improvement. And, um, all right. Well, so uh, we'll switch now and save this and run the G-level compiler, the Fortran, which is an older compiler. You see the other one is 21.8. This is an older MBT compiler. Um, and we put this again under G and Fortran G. There is no optimization in this compiler. Oops. Okay. So we just leave it. Like, oh, and I uh, put this in message class H, so I can view it in this in the spool viewer. And let's run this. And it's already done, I guess. Yeah. Let's check this thing here. So Fortran step zero, and the Go step is. Uh, also zero. This is the G-level compiler, as you can see here. So let's see. Okay, so the the compilation step also took a third of a second. All right. So unfortunately, the resolution of, of this thing here is not. If we com if we go below the single digit uh, hundreds of a second, then uh, below that we won't be able to see any difference anymore. This is how fast this computer is. Um, it's a it's this machine here. Oops. Uh, I have two CPUs, but they're fast CPUs. If I go here, more CPU info, you'll see um, it's an Intel i Core i7. It's this is a, I think sixth generation um, um, CPU from IBM uh, from 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 Intel. Sorry about this. Uh, it's extremely fast, running at 3.5 gigahertz up to, and it can go up to 4 gigahertz. Uh, but it doesn't have many cores. It only has two cores, and then with hyperthreading, we have four, uh, four uh, threads. But um, it's an extremely fast CPU. I'm just always amazed. Um, and it has all the core features, including VT, etc. So this is a very, very fast CPU. And I, ha I have about five or six Intel Nooks. Anyway, I keep saying Intel Nook. I realize maybe a lot of people don't know Intel Nook, what that is. It's these little machines here. They're tiny, um, and they have some. But, you know, I have a mix of them. I run them under a VMware ESX. Um, I have a cluster of about, uh, what did I say, one, two, three, four, five, about seven of those here in my little uh, home lab. I used to have huge, big Intel servers. They suck so much power, and these things are faster and much smaller, and I can take them everywhere. If I need to, um, and so uh, this ones go either have an i3, you can see here from the name uh, i nuke 5 i5, some are i3, and some are i7. So usually the the i3 and i5 have more cores. They have up to uh, I think eight cores each right now, um, and and then this one that I have the i7 uh, seventh generation. This one, yeah, that's the one I'm running on right now. Um, but with the i7 processor, uh, i7, yeah, that's the one I'm running this on right as we speak. Uh, this machine here, this virtual machine, um, it has an i7 
32 gigabytes of RAM, a um, couple of SSD disks. So I put in 512 gigabytes, uh, two of those each in each nook. So I have about a tera on each nook. Um, and uh, they're extremely fast. Obviously, I haven't used the graphics. Um, I used the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because on the VMware you don't have you don't have support for those. But I, I don't really need that because I'm not doing any client work. I, I, I have some Windows instances, but they're also for server work. Anyway, so just saying um, how fast this thing is. Um, so now we're going to turn on optimization for the Fortran Age compiler. Uh, if you remember, the Fortran Age compiler did this in about a third of a second as well, which is the same like the um, same like the G compiler, but the Fortran H has not. This was a run without optimization, um, as you see here, no opt. So now let's go see how to turn optimization on. For that, we have to exit here and go into the proclib. Uh, proclib, and we should have the. Oh, actually, the languages are in, in sys2 properly. Yeah. Um, Fortran H. And the procedure we invoked. Um, let's do this. Yeah. The procedure we used for the Fortran H compiler is called Fort, Fortran H CLD. Okay, so let's go look for Fortran H CLD. And here it is at the very bottom. And what we have to do here is arm equals opt equals two. Okay, so we're going to add this parameter here. Um, and this will turn on optimization. So let's test it first. Okay, uh, we'll turn it with pop equals two. Let's see if this runs. Uh, I think it did. Yeah, so um, I'm, I haven't practiced this, I haven't checked this out, I just did this. Um, spontaneously uh, improvising so uh, but it worked I'm always surprised when I try things for the first time while I'm making the video and it actually works um, I said this is not so nice here we have uh, upper capital and then lower lower cap letters but um, other than that let's go check how fast this was so this is the compilation step and the go step was the same thing now Let's compare it, you know, so the CPU time was two seconds, at uh, two hundredths of a second. And, um, cor yeah, the CPU time has been corrected by one over one, so it has not been corrected. Um, let's check here what the bottom. The hmm. Um, why is this the same speed? Let's go see the one without optimization. Um, by the way, this is so nice to see. This compiler was compiled in June 74. <laughs> so this is by now uh, 43 years old. It's not quite as old as I am, but not much younger either. Um, let's see if the okay opt equals zero. So here there was an optimization, and let's go to see what the output for Fortran H says with optimization. Maybe it didn't take optimization. Oh, it did. It did. So you can see here optimization equals two. So it did optimize, but there was not much to optimize. Either the algorithm was already very very good, or the code was written very well. Uh, I don't know, but. Um, I just suggest that you always, um, that you go into the procedure. I've never seen, um, I've never seen the optimization to introduce bugs. It's a good, very good, written, it's a very well written compiler. Um, 
So parm equals opt equals two uh, will help, will make, uh, will sp speed things up quite a bit if you have larger programs. We can try to do it with a much bigger number and then, uh, and then put it zero for now. Let me try this. And we do it with, can we add one more? 99 million, who knows? Let's try uh, without, with opt, with opt equals zero. Um, return code zero. Yeah, optimization zero. And now I ran same speed again. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it's. Oh, I think it doesn't even take numbers higher than I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so I think I know what we, so let's make this normal again. And let's take the, okay. So 900,000. Okay, let's run this without optimization. We were just doing with 2000 every time. It's obviously way too fast. Um, Okay, so now we have go. It's still three hundredths of a second. And we have all this output here. This machine is just too damn fast. Um, all right, let's try nine million. This is hard to believe how fast this machine is. It's scary. Okay, 67. Let's look at, I can't believe this. It's still 9 million. It's still 300 of a cent for 9 million. How is this even possible? Um, I don't understand it. I have to be honest. Um, let's try the G compiler. Let's increase it to 9 million as well. Sixty-eight, drop sixty-eight. And here it is. Return code zero. Uh, this actually took a little bit longer, so four hundreds of a second, but it's just, it's just hard to believe how fast this thing is. Is that even possible? Let's try 90 million. I don't know if we'll accept that it may be too big for the, um, for the size of the variables. Um, let's try it. That's a good thing about this. We're not disturbing any production by trying things like this. If I was doing this when I was working the mainframe, uh, Doing stuff like that, I would have been, I would have been in deep trouble. Um, okay, this also zero, and uh, this is just too hard to believe. Um, it doesn't even budge, but it, I see that it always goes to the same number. So actually, it's not really going up to 90 million prime numbers. It's there's something preventing it, and I'm not a good enough Fortran um, programmer to understand why it's stopping at a much lower. I mean, but we're doing this. We're doing this video because there are Fortran programmers out there, and they may be figuring this out and put some comments on what I need to change so we can actually test it with the much larger numbers. Um, or maybe somebody wants to provide a Fortran program for the n times n Queen's problem. 
uh, that would be great. I would make a video out of that. Somebody would provide the code. Um, and um, remember that you can turn optimization for the Fortran H compiler here, doing it like this. The procedure is Fortran H CLD. Okay, and you find it in Sys2 Proclip. Um, that's it, folks. Oh, and then what uh, we did war, uh, the the Fortran the Waterloo. We did that. Uh, I also wanted to show briefly um, the system compiler pack. What's in there? And I think we'll see that there is also a Mortran compiler. Um, yeah. Uh, so th this is all the Fortran we have here. We have Fortran G, which we have in TK4, Fortran H, which we also have. And then we have the Mortran, um, which is not in TK4, unfortunately. It shouldn't be easy to install. And then we have the, Wat for, the Waterloo Fortran 4 uh, compiler. So let's see what Mortran is. Mortran compiler. Uh, Mortran... Okay, let's see what Wiki says. Mortran, more Fortran is an extension of Fortran programming language used for scientific computing to introduce a syntax change, including use of semicolons to end statements. Um, okay, it's just an improved version. Uh, okay, so if you you know what Mortran is, then um, there is a way to get Mortran to install. Um, I can make a video of this, but I suggest I I, I suspect it's really trivial to get this to work. So unless there is a popular demand for me to make a video on how to install Mortran, um, you could also just, just as well install the uh, the compiler pack, um, mostly sys compiler pack. And if you install this, then you have it. Um, I can make a video on how to get this to work, maybe. Um, maybe I can do this. If I have time, I'll try to do it before I get on my flight uh, tomorrow. But this is it. Thank you, folks. Um, thank you for watching uh, the Motion Explain Frame channel. Please do subscribe to my channel if you want to get notifications of future videos. If you like this particular video, I ask you to please press the thumbs up uh, button and uh, see you around. Thanks. Thanks and goodbye.